I am so excited you decided to click on this video because I have several Dollar Tree Valentine's DIYs plus a bonus DIY at the end. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, we're gonna start off with this truck from Dollar Tree and I start off by taking off the tag. Next, I'm gonna take my ink Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the truck and the wheels. I'm going to leave the hubcaps and the little fence behind it because we're gonna paint that a different color. And as always, y'all, quick little disclaimer, I got my little man here, so no, that's not your dog, no, that's not your child, it's mine, but y'all always comment and let me know that you love to hear him anyway, so I know it's not a huge deal. But once I was done painting the truck with my ink Waverly chalk paint, then I'm going to go in with my crimson Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the rest. Now for the fence piece in the back of the truck, I realized that the brush that I was using was a little bit too big, so I did pick up a smaller brush just to get around those small little details. Now I know that DIY intimidates many of you guys, but I would just encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone. I was not always the best at DIY. Yes, I've been DIYing for a while, pretty much my entire life, but as far as really nice projects, I really just started doing nice projects the last couple years. The more I do it, the better I get, so I know that if I can do it, I know y'all can do it as well. And when I'm doing little details like this, I just pop on something on my phone on like YouTube, and I just paint away. I have fun. So if you guys do not like these colors, you can always customize this to suit your decor. You do not have to use the colors that I'm using if you don't like it. Once I was done with the truck completely, then I went in with my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. Y'all know I love dry brushing, so once again, if you don't like dry brushing, leave that out. But I just go all I just go around all of the edges as well as inside the truck to give it a little bit of dimension. Once the dry brushing was done and the truck was completely dry, then I took this little chalk couture transfer. And again, you can customize this if you don't like this particular pattern. There are many patterns in my chalk shop linked in the description box below, as well as in the pinned comment. And I also put together all of the chalk couture supplies that I used in this video in one link. And you guys can add and subtract from that cart as you wish but i just like to put it all in one place so everybody can find it so i just transferred on that little image with my white chalk paste and then originally i was going to try to put two of these dollar tree beaded wood wreaths together but i just didn't like the way that it looked so i ended up using one and gluing the truck down on either side Next, I took this ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I thought that it was super cute and fitting since it had a little truck on it with hearts. So I just made a simple bow, and then I cinched it in the middle and tied it with some jute. I cut the ends, and then I just hot glued that to the bottom. And look how gorgeous this turned out. I absolutely love it. Now, it's not my absolute favorite that I've ever done. However, Valentine's Day decor is kind of out of my out of my comfort zone just because y'all know that I love farmhouse decor but when you step outside of your comfort zone you'll be surprised at what you can do so let me know down in the comments would you guys have changed up the colors or would you leave it exactly how I did it Mm 
Moving on to DIY number two, I take this little art picture frame from Dollar Tree and I start by taking off the plastic. I also take that little picture out. I pull off the stand from the back as well as unscrew the hanger from the front. Next, I take this unfinished wood heart from Dollar Tree and I give it a distressed coat of my Crimson Waverly chalk paint. While the heart was drying, I took my Chalk Couture transfer and I just cut off the images that I thought that I would use. Once again, if you don't like the ones that I'm using, there are so many different little images in one transfer, which is another reason why I love Chalk Couture because you can mix and match so many different things. So for the arrow, I just transferred that on with my black chalk paste. And then once you peel back, that transfer is the beauty and it literally never gets old. Look how crisp and gorgeous this turns out and it was so easy to use. Now I finally got a new camera, so I did not lose the footage. I just forgot to hit the record button, but I did dry brush that heart. And then I also took the heart cutout that came with the arrow and the love sign. And I glued that to the middle of my red heart. And then I took the coordinating transfer and transfer that on with my gold chalk paste. For the arrow, in the middle, I transferred on the Love Shack. And once again, when you peel back that transfer, I absolutely love how crisp the letters are. And y'all, I mean, you can do this with Cricut. You can do this with many different things. But with my busy life, Chalk Couture is so quick and easy, and it comes out absolutely gorgeous, which is why it's my favorite medium to use. For the arch window, I felt that it was just missing a little something. Y'all know I love dry brushing, so I took my Antique Wax by Waverly and my chip brush that are linked in my Amazon shop in the description box as well as the pinned comment, and I just dry brush all the way around all the little window pieces and the top pieces as well. Now I feel like dry brushing is kind of like an acquired taste um, because sometimes I add more, I add less. Now I felt that it was a little bit too heavy handed so I did just go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush over the antique wax just to dumb that down a little bit and then I went ahead and glued down my little embellishments. So I started with the heart and I glued that up to the top and I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with the arrow if I wanted it on top of the heart or at an angle at the bottom but I ultimately just decided to glue it straight at the bottom. Another pro tip is to while your glue is drying hold your project up that way you can adjust it because when I held mine up I kind of realized that it wasn't exactly how I wanted it to be so I just kind of shifted it around until my eyes were happy. Next I took this ribbon from Dollar Tree. I made a simple bow glue that down to the top of the heart and that was it for this one look how cute this turned out so simple so easy to do but yet it looks so high end For DIY number three, y'all know I had to make a sign. Signs are probably like one of my favorite projects to do. 
They're just so simple and so easy, yet they look so gorgeous. And the signs that you can buy, y'all know, are absolutely ridiculously priced. So we're going to start off with this wood heart from Dollar Tree. I cut the tag off and then I give it a distressed coat of my ballet slipper by Waverly Chalk Paint. Now, if your local Walmart does not carry Waverly Chalk Paint anymore, I do know that they have a similar brand. So you just use whatever you have on hand. I hit it with the blow dryer because y'all know I am super impatient and then I pull the transfer that I'm going to use and mark off the space that I need in the middle with some painters tape. The easiest way to do this is just place your tape at the top and then you're going to take the transfer that you're going to use and hold it up to the space and then take another piece of painters tape at the bottom wherever the bottom of your transfer is. Now y'all know my OCD is absolutely ridiculous so once again I held my sign up just to make sure the tape was straight and then I adjusted that accordingly. Once I had taped that down then I just paint that middle space with a distressed coat of ink Waverly chalk paint. Once my paint was completely dry. Once again, y'all know I'm impatient, so I did hit it with my blow dryer. I just pulled the painter's tape from the top and the bottom. Next, I took my transfer. Now, this transfer is up and down, but that does not mean that you have to use it that way. I wanted to use mine across, so I just started with the VAL. I transferred that on, and this is a layered transfer. So you're going to do the one layer and then the next layer. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So I started with the first letters and then I continued on to complete the word Valentine. And I did transfer that on with my white chalk paste. Now again, this is a part you can have fun with. You can make your letters different colors. Just because I am using the colors that I am does not mean that you have to. And again, look how crisp this comes out. It is my absolute favorite thing about Chalk Couture. It is so quick and easy to get such a high-end looking image. And once I had the first layer complete, then I go in with the second layer. Now you cut this transfer apart and it also has little watermarks. That way, if you're nervous to line it up correctly, all you have to do, as long as you are using a surface that you can erase the watermark, you can just line the little watermark up and then transfer it on. But I have done this many times, so I really wasn't worried about it. So I just lined it up as best as possible, and I did the second layer with my rose gold chalk paste. Now these transfers will last you a really long time. I just wanna encourage you guys to make sure that you are washing your transfers immediately and then make sure you lay them sticky side up on a paper towel to dry. I also like to take a paper towel and wipe the excess water away. I know that sounds crazy because paper towel too sticky, it doesn't sound right, but trust me, it will be fine as long as you don't continually do it. But just wipe away the excess water let it completely dry and then you can stick it back to your backing sheet and use it over and over again now I had this transfer left over from Christmas it came with a different transfer so I just loved that shiplap and I thought that it would look super cute on this heart so I did transfer on the shiplap at the top and bottom of my heart with my white chalk paste Again, don't forget to wash your transfer immediately. Don't be alarmed. Black and red always stain your transfers. But as long as there is no paste in the transfer part, like the mesh part, you're good to go. Next, I take this ribbon that I got from Walmart. I made a simple bow. Look how gorgeous this ribbon is. I actually got it at like 90% off with all of the Christmas sales. So I just made a simple bow at the top, glued that down with some hot glue. I then made a simple loop for the bag hanger and that was it for this sign. 
Now, when I was putting this sign together, I wasn't really too sure, but I absolutely love the way that it turned out, and I can't wait to hear what y'all think down in the comments below. If you guys are enjoying this, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe and share this out. It really helps my channel. I am so close to 100K, and I know that we can get there really soon with your help. Moving on to the next DIY, I take this beaded garland from Dollar Tree. Now, I absolutely love the beads, the black beads and the tassel, but the rainbow, I just kind of felt like it was like out of place. So all I did was cut off that rainbow. And then I also took some ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, I just recently did a Dollar Tree haul. So if you guys have not seen that, I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner. Once you're done this video, go over and check it out but I wanted to haul all of them items for you guys before I DIY'd with them so that's why I was kind of in a rush to get it up but I hauled these ribbons and I just took them and I started by cutting one piece of the little heart ribbon tying that around to kind of gauge the size of ribbon that I needed now don't make this same mistake I did y'all I ended up cutting my pieces like way too small I had to fight with them to tie them on which was no big deal but it did just take me a little bit longer so make sure you uh, measure twice and cut once and you will be good to go but I just alternated all of the ribbons I ended up pulling the XO ribbon from my stash from last year. I just felt that it was missing a little something, so I absolutely love them, and I did end up needing about nine of each. I had five different ribbons, so I needed about nine of each. Once I had all of the ribbons tied on, and I did tie one after every single bead. If you don't like it that full, you can totally skip a few beads. Um, you can customize it again to your liking, totally up to you. So once I was done with the garland, then I took these little XO cutouts that you can get from my chalk site. Once again, all of the chalk couture items that I use will be linked in the pinned comment as well as the description box for y'all. You can add and subtract from your cart as you like. I just like to put it all in one place. So it has the XOXO cutouts and then it also has a coordinating transfer. So you can choose the little dots or the lines. Now I originally did the dots but I just didn't like how light the dots were so I just flipped them over and I transferred on the stripes. The I used my candy apple red for the X and my black chalk paste for the O. Once the front and back were completely dry, then I went ahead and glued the corner of the X to the O. Now because we added ribbon and I cut that rainbow off of the end there wasn't really much to like tie to the XO I was originally going to drill a hole in it and then thread the jute through it however I just didn't have enough for that so no big deal all I did was glue the jute to the back of the XO and then I also had these little glitter heart foam stickers from Walmart and I just stuck down one of those little hearts in the middle of the tassel. I also cut that tassel a little bit shorter because I don't know it just looked a little funny with how long it was and that was it for this garland. Look how gorgeous it is. I absolutely love the way that it turned out and I cannot wait to use it for years to come. Let me know what y'all think. Would you have switched up the ribbon? Would you have put your ribbon every few beads or do you love it just the way it is? For the next DIY, this is another super easy one. I grabbed this Valentine's Day jar from Dollar Tree and a little thing of fairy lights from my Amazon shop. You can find that 
again in the pinned comment in the description box and then i also got this berry garland from dollar tree at 50 percent off because technically it was in with the christmas items so all i did was just unravel the lights as well as the berry garland I just twisted them together and then cut the berry garland wherever it met the end of the light strand. So I start by opening up this table scatter that I got from Dollar Tree. It's so cute. It has little lips and hearts and diamonds in it. I absolutely love it. And I'm probably going to use the table scatter for a different um, project. So if you guys want to see more Valentine's Day DIYs, let me know down in the comments. But I open up one, I believe one or two of the table scatters. I put that in and then I put in my lights and berries and then finish with adding two more bags of the table scatter. I then hide my battery pack in the back behind all of the table scatter and then I put my lid back on. Next I glue some jute around the neck of the bottle. I also make a simple bow with my Dollar Tree ribbon and glue that to the top where my little heart is at the top of my jar. Originally, I wasn't too sure if I wanted to glue that down in the middle of the jute, but I ultimately decided to glue it to the top of the heart. But as I always say, if you don't like that, you can glue your ribbon wherever you like or you can totally leave the ribbon out. I also recommend to glue your ribbon down with something more like super glue just because glass with hot glue does not mix very well. But like I said, I make a little ribbon and I love my finger bow trick. If you guys need to know how to make bows, I got you. I have an entire video where I made 11 different bows from Dollar Tree ribbons. So I will leave that in the cards in the right hand corner for y'all. But like I said, I glue that to the top with some hot glue. Um, after I was done filming, I did glue it to the top with super glue just because the bow ended up falling off. Next, I take this love cutout from Chalk Couture that came in the pack with the arrow, and it also had a coordinating transfer. So I transfer on the word love with my rose gold paste, and then I peel back my transfer to reveal that gorgeous love image. Once again, hindsight is 2020. I don't know why I do this, you guys. I knew better than to try to glue onto glass, <laughs> but it's just super quick and I tried it. It did not work, it fell off. So I ended up gluing down my love with some super glue and that was it for this project. I absolutely love the way this little jar turned out. Rather the lights are on or off. So let me know down in the comments what y'all think. If you guys are enjoying this content, I would greatly appreciate you to share it out and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, y'all, for the last DIY, now this is a ton of DIYs in one, so... If you do not have all of these little pieces, do not worry. You can either purchase them, like I said, in the link in the pinned comment or the uh, description box, or you can just use what you have on hand. You can purchase the transfers and use what you have on hand or DIY little tear tray pieces. So I'm going to start off with the tear tray essential kit. This comes with several of these little decor pieces. Aren't they so stinking cute? Y'all know I am a sucker for anything mini. So this is the faux book stack and I start off by painting one of the sides with my Waverly Ballet Slipper. And then once that was dry, then I painted right next to it the next stack with my Ink Waverly Chalk Paint. Now for the first layer, I of course blow dried it to make sure it was nice and dry. And you could still see some of the white showing through, so I did give it a good second coat. 
Now, if you're super nervous about getting any paint within the lines, then you can always tape this off, but I wasn't too worried about it. I love rustic decor, so it wasn't a big deal to me if I went outside of the lines, but like I said, if you would like yours to be totally perfect, you can always use painter's tape. For the next one, I'm going to use that little love cutout again and the love transfer. And for this one, I wanted to do a little ombre effect. So I started with the rose gold and I transferred that onto the bottom of the wording. And then I also used my black chalk paste at the top. And to get that ombre effect, all I did was take my squeegee and just kind of joined the two colors together in the middle. Now a pro tip when working with these transfers, your squeegee and your paste, sometimes I get comments asking why does it bleed? Is there anything that I can do about that? So the easiest way to make sure that it doesn't bleed is to make sure that your paste is nice and stirred up. You also want to squeegee with even pressure and then lastly when you pull up your transfer you want to make sure that you pull it up nice and slowly so you get a nice image for the next little mini DIY we're gonna take that heart cut out that came in the same package and it comes with that heart transfer but I thought that it would be really cute to transfer on this little pattern and that's the beauty with chalk couture like I said before you can mix and match just because that heart transfer goes with the heart cutout does not necessarily mean that that is what you have to transfer on so I take the little pattern and for this particular one, I wanted to do kind of like a Mod Podge of the black and rose gold. So I just dabbed the rose gold randomly and then dabbed the black in the other empty spaces. And then I just took my squeegee and squeegeed them together. Next, I transferred on the little love shack onto the heart. And here is why I tell you to pull up your transfer slowly. I pulled mine up a little bit too quickly and the letters did bleed together, but no big deal. I love the way that it turned out. For the next little mini DIY, I take that arrow once again and I transfer on the coordinating arrow with my rose gold chalk paste. Once that was completely dry, then I took this XOXO transfer and I transferred that on with my black paste. And once again, once that was completely dry, then I took little stickers from Walmart, the foam heart stickers, and I just stuck those right beside the XOXO and look how cute this one turned out. Next, I cut out the other transfers that I was going to use. Now, as you can see here, there are so many different options in one transfer. And again, they're reusable, so you can use them for many different things. But of course, y'all know I had to cut out the truck. Those little hearts were so cute. And for the book stack, I cut out the PS, I love you. And I went ahead and stuck those down to the right side of my book stack. For the PS and the U, I transferred that on with my black paste. And then for the I love, I transferred that on with the rose gold. Once again, I peel back those transfers and look how crisp these words come out. Now, of course, you could totally do more to this book stack, but I was just really digging the simplicity of it. So let me know down in the comments, would you have decorated this more or do you like it just the way it is? Next, I'm going to take a few transfers and place them down on the rest of my little mini projects just so that way I can kind of see like what colors I want where if that makes sense so I put the special delivery on the little picture I put the little hearts on the mini board and base and then I put the 14 on the mini cutting board and I transfer that 14 on with my peony chalk paste once the heart was dry, then I took my February transfer and transferred that on with my white paste. 
I then pull up the transfer and look how gorgeous it looks already, but I'm going to embellish it here in a minute after I transfer on the hearts and leaving one of them open so that I can transfer on one with the rose gold and the rest with my white paste. Isn't this little mini board and base so cute? We also do have bigger board and bases on my site, but I just can't get over how cute the mini one is. I also ended up putting a foam sticker on the heart that I transferred on with the rose gold and that one was done. For the truck, I transfer on the wording with my black paste. I transferred on the hearts with my rose gold. I did the truck in red and the tires in black. And look how cute this one is as well. I ended up putting two stickers on the side of the wording. For the mini rolling pin, I took my Be Mine transfer, transferred on the heart with my candy apple red paste and the wording with my black paste. Once again, I did this once I was done filming, so that's why I did not include it. I do believe I showed you guys at the end where I stuck the stickers down, uh, but I did use a red foam sticker to place on top of the heart on the rolling pin and then I also made a simple bow with my Dollar Tree ribbon and I glued that right above the wording. And like I said before, there are so many different options for each of these pieces. So again, if you don't like the wording or the images that I transfer on, if you purchase one yourself, you can totally choose whichever image you like. Going back to the mini cutting board, I had this greenery or these florals, not greenery. <laughs> Oh my goodness, y'all, I'm losing my mind. Stick with me here. We're almost done. So if y'all are still around, leave a red heart in the comments. That way I know who the real OGs are. But I just transferred on that uh, floral to the top. I cut this Dollar Tree ribbon in half, made a simple little bow, and glued that in the middle of the florals. And look how cute this little cutting board is. For the last part of this tiered tray DIY, we are going to do the actual tiered tray itself. So I take it out of the package and I cut apart the coordinating transfer. Next, I'm going to take the top piece. I'm going to line it up. It has a little circle where the um, circle meets that little middle part. That way you can fit it perfectly on there. And then once again, I'm going to do the ombre effect with three different colors. So I used my peony for the first part of the hearts. Then I joined that together because I did the second part with rose gold. And then I did black at the top and joined those together as well. Of course, peeling it back is my absolute favorite part. And then I make sure that it's nice and dry. I also wash my transfer because I couldn't see to line it up. And y'all know I'm OCD, so I didn't want my hearts to be all wonky. So I did wash my transfer, dry it really good, and then lined it up once again and completed the other side. I then just repeated those exact same steps for the bottom tray. For the second side, I didn't worry about washing it just because I could see to line it up. So I would just suggest to not transfer over the circle part. That way you can see where to line it up and then you won't have to wash in between. You can totally do both sides. Once I was finished both sides, 
or both trays, I should say. Then I went ahead, hit it with my blow dryer to make sure it was nice and dry. And then I put my tear tray together. It's super easy. It comes with instructions if you're not really sure what to do or how to do it. So I absolutely love how this turned out, y'all. I am so excited. My daughter's trying to steal it from me already. <laughs> so I will probably make an entire another one for her just so that way we can have match ones but I don't know Valentine's Day comes and goes so quickly so we'll have to see about that but I cannot wait to hear what y'all think about this entire tear tray kit in the comment section below and I don't know about you but tear trays are a little bit tricky to put together so I just kind of wanted to include how I decorated it and kind of like my process for decorating this just in case you want to do yours the exact same. Now I know everybody is sick of gnomes. I got all the comments in my uh, haul video, which I totally get. I was never really into gnomes to be quite honest, but I just thought that these went with this tear tray so perfectly. The garland looks gorgeous with it as well. So I thought that it would be really cute to put the gnomes on my tear tray. And here we go. I'm gonna show you where I put the stickers on all of the little DIY projects. And that was it for this tear tray kit. Look how absolutely stunning this turned out. I love the little kissing booths and the gnomes on it with all of the other little pieces. I think they look so good together. Let me know down in the comments what you think as well. I'm also super curious to know which of the little mini DIYs was your favorite. I have a feeling I know you guys are going to say the truck one, which I feel like is mine, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And don't forget, if you guys want to get any of these items in this tier tray kit, now they do come individually. Like I said, it'll be linked down below for all of you guys. So for the last little DIY, I don't know if you want to call this a DIY, but I just wanted to show you my idea for this little pink tree. So I took the tree out of the box. Of course, I fluffed it up. And then I thought it would be so, I thought <laughs> it would be so cute to take these little XO cutouts and just kind of randomly put them all around the tree. And I absolutely love the way that it looks with all of the other decor. Let me know how you guys decorated your pink trees I cannot wait to hear what you guys have done so with that being said you guys we are finally at the end of this video thank you so so much for hanging out with me today um, let me know down in the comments like I said which project was your favorite sorry that I sound a little crazy we're all under the weather which is why this video didn't happen for a couple days later but you know what better late than never and I just enjoy making all of these projects for you guys my life is just crazy with four kids and one of them being a breastfed newborn well he's an infant now so anyway you guys if you guys want any info on how I recently lost 60 pounds in six months text my number the word ketones on the screen I would love to help y'all feel good again you can also text my number the word chalk for how to get 40% off of all the transfers and with that being said if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you're worthy you're gorgeous and you can literally do anything you set your mind to with that being said don't forget to share this out and subscribe if you haven't already and I love you all so much I'll catch you in the next one bye the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right